This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, we are on a walk-in freezer that's not working right. Just got here, never been to this place before. So we got a beacon system. They're getting some codes on it. So we're gonna figure out what's going on here. Uh, E3 and see if we can figure out where that code thing's at. If not, I've got one out in my truck. That's what we got going on starters. Coil is clean, which is good. So we're not a freeze up. I think we got a sensor bad, but let's figure it out here. All right, I got two different books here. These things are kind of old, but they're for the 79A and I think 80A or something. So E3 is a suction temp sensor. So let's check sensor and board connection. So let's check the resistance, see where we're at. Problem is that suction temperature sensor, if it don't have the suction temperature sensor, it can't do superheat. And since it's an electronic expansion valve, it doesn't want to flood the coil. So you can see the suction sensor comes right there on the suction line, it comes up, it's been butt connected to there, and there's the suction temp right on the board. So we can also go in there and could read temperature that it's reading and see what it's doing just by scrolling around through their monitor probably would work. Let's go ahead and check. I don't know if this meter's got high enough resistance cap capacity to do it or not. Let's see what we get. So with this meter, I have nothing. I don't necessarily trust that. Let's go ahead and check the frost temp sensor and see if it shows on the meter. And the defrost sensor comes in at 36,000. So. I think this meter will go up to maybe 60,000. That's the only thing bad about some of these flukes. They just don't go real high in the, some of the resistance ranges when they're a clamp meter. I'm gonna say, chances are, that some of our issue there. We'll go ahead and just get a new sensor on there and see how it works. Let's see if we can dig that out. They kind of got ice all back in here on that, which is great. Yeah, that's kind of stuck on there. But we'll see if we can pull that thing out. I don't know, that's really in there tight. I don't know, we'll see if we can get it out of there. That's in a copper well there, so I'm gonna get my hand torch out, put a little warmth on there. Was able to break off some of that ice. All right, looks like I've got one here. And uh, so yeah, we'll get that on there. Get a couple more butt connectors because we don't have the exact fitting there. Actually, it'd be better to use some of those, but eh. Go ahead and get her juiced up. All right, didn't record it because it's just hard to do with both hands, but just use the torch there. Kept it away from it, just let the radiant heat get over there to it. Was able to pull it right out. So we got that out. Go ahead and get our new one here in while it's still fairly warm, hopefully. There you go. Maybe. Yep, went right in the hole. There we go. We'll make sure we put a wire tie around that so it can't pop right back out. So that will potentially condensate and the ice could shove it out. There we go. But usually with these clients, they do a really good job supposed to use the oval, not the puncture. There we go. I shouldn't be able to pull it out. Now let's go ahead and crimp that onto the new sensor here. Tell you what, let's feed that through in advance because that may not fit through there. Otherwise, feed that thing through there. There we go. Not always the greatest grip. Sometimes it you're almost better off just to kind of use your pinchers and pull it off. There we go, and then cut off the excess that we just screwed up. There we go. I always like to get my butt connector lined up with the edge of my crimper so I know that it's right at the very end of the metal. And it won't 
really matter clarity on these. But we're going to do white to white. There we go. Alright, let's get the black one there and we will see if this works. There we go. Tug, tug, good, good. Okay, so we got a Got her on there. Get it plugged back in. See if the E3 goes away. There we go. Defrost. Look at that. As soon as I plugged it in. Look at that. So we'll get a wire tie, like I said, on there because I don't want that thing moving. It's already frozen to place. But let's see if we can monitor. And we'll scroll through here. Suction tip. 30 so it is measured now all right let's make sure i didn't make a mistake here suction temperature sct is that what i had sct there we go 32 yeah that must have been it and i think yeah your adjustment thing there that's for when you're actually selecting things you know whether it be your what superheat things like that just for giggles, let's make sure everything's still um, set up correctly. I'm going to say, I think this is 404. So let's check our refrigerant. So program review. We want to go program review. I'm trying to remember. I don't do these very often. By the time you get done, you get really good at it. And then you forget. Monitor, superheat, soup. SUP 37, yeah. Just at least that's calculating it now. That means it's got a suction pressure. So that's the only other thing we want to make sure it works. So let's go for suction um, pressure. SCP. Let's go to SCP. There we go. Suction pressure 31. So it is measuring that. That's kind of interesting that it's that high in a pump down state. When it's running, we'll check to see what our superheat and stuff like that is. Let's look to see where our valve steps, ESP, electronic step, I believe, zero. So it's all the way closed. That's pretty much where we wanted it. There was talk about it later that they really prefer a solenoid valve on these now instead of just that uh, valve there. As you can see, it thinks made America. I think that was probably really cheap. Not. Um, there's your suction transducer, just where you would expect it to be at. Box temperature right there. Let's see what our box temperature is. Let's go to outdoor temperature. That's useful. I would say they don't have that hooked up. I about guarantee it. Well, not a surprise. This is a pretty big restaurant chain. Well, this gives us a chance to see our coil. Our coil is clear and the heaters are working i can feel them plain as day don't see any water building up on my drain which that's a really nice drain let me see what our defrost temperature if i can get into the review which i don't want to don't want to kill the defrost i'm gonna let it terminate on its own oh something just clicked yeah the monitor last defrost lapse time dfe how long did it take last time eight minutes so i mean it's obviously calculating in advance that way it's not um, wasting time building up heat in the box. AC power voltage, AC, just for giggles. Let's see what the AC is. 26 volts, so whatever's going in must be accurate. Here's your defrost heaters, relays, fans. I, I really like these. I mean, they're old, but I really like them. As long as you got the parts for it, it's not bad. But we could review air, what defrost type, air, electric, I mean, honestly, it's pretty much all set up right there. You really would think box temperature would be in here. <laughs> Superheat, export, uh, expansion valve, suction temperature, suction saturation, vapor temperature, suction pressure, outdoor temperature, defrost temperature, defrost temperature, DFT. Let's see what our DFT is. Let's see what temperature it is. I bet it's about 60 maybe where it's going to trigger. I know, you guys are probably like, well, it's this that takes it off of that. Defrost temperature is probably what they're going to use, I bet. I don't think they've got a dedicated sensor just for that. And you can see the heat that's radiating off of the wall, which is probably why you've got this happening back here. Yeah, see that's, that's generating that much heat, but that's 
I had to chisel that off earlier. Yeah, there's massive heat there. It really could terminate sooner, but this is not usually one of our stores, so I'm not gonna change anything. They've got parameters they want things done at. Yeah, it's 61, still not terminating. Notice they use the metal uh, all thread. We use plastic bolts. That way they don't uh, transfer through the temperature and they don't rust. All right, it was about 62 degrees that it terminated and then fan delay was very short. Because, like I said, it's definitely getting a little warmer than it needs to. I'm gonna see if we can review. There, I had to hit clear test. So A and E is electric. That is your defrost type. Next one's gonna be refrigerant type. 404, that's correct. Box temperature, Let's see what that's set for. Negative 10, that sounds about right. SUP, superheat, set for eight. A little on the higher side, but I'm not gonna change it. SLA, slave operating mode, no, because it doesn't have another one, DFA, DDF. Uh, defrost fail safe time, no, uh, it should have one. Number defrost six, that's quite a few of them. And then DFF, fail safe time, 35 minutes, okay. How did that get out of it? Defrost in temperature, which is the next one. 60, which went above it, but who knows. It was a delay. DFS, which uh, defrost start time, offset hours, no offset. ALH, it's going to be alarm high, 5 degrees. Alarm uh, low temperature, negative 15. ALT is some minutes and Fahrenheit or Celsius. So for the most part, everything looks like it's set pretty normal. I don't want to change anything major on it because like I said, places like where I'm working at have exact ways they want it done because every one of their thousands and thousands of stores um, are gonna be exactly the same. Anyhow, that's pretty much about it other than going up on the roof and double check the uh, condenser. Took me a second to find it. Looks like a regular package unit, but there it is. Coil looks clean. Both fans feel like they're running. That one actually is running reverse, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at this mess. See all the dark oil? Had some problems in here before. Wow. That's creative. Wire tied to wire tied. Well, I guess at least it's wire tied, right? There's your outdoor sensor right there. Remote fan shut down. We have a sight glass somewhere in here. There we go. Looks clear to me. Clear sight glass, definitely not clean. This thing's been running on a prayer for quite a while. Wow. Yeah. That don't look very good. Cap's messing over there. Yeah. You've got your cooler and your freezer in here, so uh, freezer probably going to be bigger. That's a hundred or no, 13k versus 10k. So this is going to be your cooler most likely. They got their own dedicated maintenance people, so yeah. And then you can also tell it's freezer because of the uh, liquid injection. So cooling. So. I did my part, made sure it wasn't nothing else besides just the obvious. Go down and pick things up. I've got it back on cool and it's 21 in here. You can see that it's feeding the tubes. The superheat is reading a little high under the circumstances. I don't want to dig in too deep on this because like I said, they got their own maintenance guys and you get changing too many things. 
and it's like we've never worked here before, so it's kind of one of them things where you just fix it and get out and build a relationship later type thing. 34 degrees, but we're only at 21 degrees in the box, so it's going to be high at this kind of temperature in the box. Uh, suction pressure is kind of low, which looking at the refrigeration system up there, it doesn't surprise me. A suction pressure, SCP, which could be off. 18, anyhow, um, put it back to cool, freeze box temperature. We're just gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. All right, so reading 17 there. Good deal.